So this is how government is immoral. And this yep. organization that calls itself the government, therefore, only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions you and I and my friends here mm -hmm. already share. Well, if you look at um, history, a lot of times now I'm not um, I'm not an expert on all the history of the world, but it seems to me you know there's this pattern of governments establishing themselves through violence. Right. For example, you take the American Revolution. Um, that gov uh, you know that government was established via violent revolution against an already violent government. I mean, monarchies are shittier yeah. than democracies, which are already kind of shitty. Um, or you know, um, most modern governments were established through violent means, and like. Modern, stable governments aren't necessarily, you know, I mean, I don't really like governments, but, um, but modern stable governments aren't as bad as non-stable governments, but you still have, you know, these institutions that were founded on violent means anyway. Right. So, you know, the, the fact that they were founded on violent means means, you know, they're not going to just be non-violent because they say they will. Right. That one, that one exception to allowing itself to be established through violence creates more exceptions that lead on to where it is today. Like, back then it would be 1% tax, right? Mm -hmm. They start like you're talking about the revolution, right? The, the smallest government with checks and ballots in the whole world, right? Mm -hmm. And they revolted because of taxation, right? Taxation without representation. But at the same time, by establishing themselves, uh, through the similar kind of violence that I guess the monarchy established themselves like George Washington later uh, did the whiskey rebellion mm -hmm. right to put that down and went to war against peaceful people for taxes to collect right so it's interesting I guess the hypocritical stances like we're against taxes unless we're the one who is taxing people here mm -hmm. right um, but yeah so 1% tax becomes 2% 3% and now today is nearly half your income stolen through taxation when you add well, it all up. Well, my biggest problem isn't taxation. Honestly, I find taxation, you know, a small issue on the large amount of issues that is the government. Um, personally, I find things like police violence, uh, government surveillance, and cultural oppression to be um, larger problems. I mean, obviously there is such thing as economic violence and there's definitely class problems in the United States and other countries. But personally, I find taxes, um, if you're going to have a government, and, you know, ideally, I wouldn't want the government, really. All right, well, let's talk about that, okay? Uh, all right, so what is government, right? Government, the only thing that government is, it just has a monopoly on the services you and I want. Because I want roads, I want law, I want security, I want uh, first-class mail, mm -hmm. I want all call from ABC, right? But these are things that the government has finally monopolized, which prevent you from having the economic freedom to cancel or unsubscribe as you would from a real business service or compete entrepreneurially against these monopolized services in order to say, I can provide you a better service that's not going to be abusive or harmful to you, the consumer. Well, um, that is true. Right. But the only thing about that is, um, my concern is that um, many private corporations commit economic violence as well. Well, without government, you don't have corporations anymore. Corporation is an extension of the immunity that government grants themselves. Like, you can't sue a state prosecutor, you can't sue judges, politicians, the same thing. That's an immunity extended from them that allows uh, CEOs to escape liability as well, right? So without government to enforce this, those pieces of papers that allow them to escape liability, there's no corporations. It goes back to the way it used to be where you were held liable as an individual. I suppose. Like, I'm not entirely sure I agree with you, but the thing is, I'm not sure if I also have enough information to argue. Right, 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 right. <laughs> um, so you're saying, so what about uh, businesses uh, competing in the market to provide these services? Uh, what do you think of that? Well, um... I'm in. Uh, I'm emergency personnel, firefighter. Oh, okay. So I'm not. I'm not a big proponent of private businesses. Um, honestly, uh, I, I feel like if you're going to have a government, most things should probably be. Uh, most essential services should probably be performed by that government. Um, but the only thing is, um, private services and you know uh, government can both mishandle can both mishandle things and commit violence so i'm not really well, a big fan of organizations in general well we've already established that government only knows how to solve problems through violence mm -hmm. right because first they must necessarily rob you of your property through taxation mm -hmm. in order to say we're going to provide you a service mm -hmm. right like in terms of security i'm going to protect your property but first i have to rob you of your property mm -hmm. right um a business like netflix can't 
do any of that stuff, right? The mm -hmm. only thing, uh, you're, you're, uh, you as a consumer are in charge because at any time you can cancel with the point of a button and go to somewhere else, mm -hmm. right? Go to who, right? They tried to do this a couple years ago. Netflix tried to increase the prices overnight. It's like, look, <laughs> there's market competition. I could go anywhere I want, right? Um, whereas with government, when they increase it to taxes, you can't go anywhere, mm -hmm. right? This is why uh, it's illegal and criminal for FedEx and UPS to compete in the market in delivering pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. No one's allowed to compete in that market. Um, whereas when you have market competition, costs go down, quality goes up, right? Uh, the availability of anyone to compete in that market is what makes uh, that a, a, a real market, right? When government eliminates price, for example, when has monopolized it, uh, they don't know whether they're overproducing or underproducing. Um, it doesn't really reflect its true nature of its market value cost because they eliminate competition. Um, but so the difference between the two, I would say, is that uh, a free market society based on consent is voluntary, it's mm -hmm. consensual, right? One that is under statism, synonymous for government, is coercive, right? Mm -hmm. You have no freedom to cancel, you have no freedom to unsubscribe. It's from the top down. Politicians can tell you what you can and cannot do with your body or with your property, but you can't tell them the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Netflix CEO, I never have to interact with anyone in my life, right? <laughs> Most they can do is like, here's a great service, please try this, or go to a food court, please try the sample. Don't go to McDonald's. Mm. Like I say, um, like I said, I'm not entirely sure if I agree with that, but again, I would need to learn more about it to say. Like, right, right, right. Absolutely, absolutely. But I mean, mostly, I'm not a big fan of competition in general. Why um, is that? Um, because I think every well, okay, this is gonna sound pretty hippy dippy, and <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, I'm a hippy dippy bleeding heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you know, but I'm a big fan of people should try to cooperate and get along. I don't think competition is, um, you know, is really a healthy thing for humans. Honestly, I think, um, you know, cooperation builds better communities and, you know, is ultimately less violent and in, you know, at its base. And, you know, is just in a better way of, you know, working with other people rather than cooperating for resources, well, you know, rather than competing for resources. Right. Well, what if I were to tell you competition is actually cooperation for resources? How so? Uh, do you have a pencil? Uh, I do actually. Right? Hang on. Do I have lots of things. I have lots of things. Right. There we go. All right. Can you make a pencil? Nope. Right? Do you know anyone that can make a pencil? Nope. Right? To make a pencil actually requires the cooperation of thousands and thousands of people that you've never met in your yep. lifetime to to harvest the rubber you know from the trees to get the pieces of metals to put the machinery together to make it so small and to carve it out uh, <laughs> and to uh, to cut out the, the shape of the pencil right the, the wood and the lead all of this involves mm -hmm. involves the cooperation so if thousands of people you'll never have a chance to meet or understand uh, what they are doing on their part so that way they can cooperate in a market competitively to produce something as simple as a pencil yep right no one I, I don't know I, you can't make a pencil from scratch right to kind of go out there try to harvest all these things is, uh, I mean you could but it'd be hard I don't think anyone's actually been able to do it well there uh, you go uh, right yeah, yeah. <laughs> on, on their own right yeah. I mean you, you need the machinery right you need yeah. uh, you need the oh, gum yeah, totally. tree right yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that involves cooperation so if I'm saying the market is uh, that's that's the result the market is the result of uh, people acting in the self-interest yeah of course of course <laughs> in uh, cooperation um, in competition this means uh, hey I have a better way to make a pencil or I have a like when you go to a t-shirt store right mm -hmm. that's competition there hey you may not like their style of t-shirts or they may have a different kind of design or preferences or it's just value subjective it's not going to be the same for everyone but there everyone cooperates with one another the food courts right they have to cooperate to one another to compete in that area um, I suppose that's true, right. and like, you know, I mean, I suppose there's no th no such thing as getting rid of, co of competition entirely, but you know, my concern is that it's just like, it seems like, it seems to me like competition, it's more likely to become violent and, you know, um, useless than uh, just cooperation. How would it become violent? Uh, well, you know, uh, people, uh, hang on. Yeah, because <laughs> we're talking about now in the absence of government. Right, so there's no taxation, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, again, government has a monopoly on these things we want. So in, in a free society based on consent, on thousands of competing societies, we have rules now. Mm -hmm. Rules that you give explicit consent to, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, great, uh, this community allows cannabis usage. Awesome, the one across the street doesn't. Well, I like cannabis, so I'll move here, right? Mm -hmm. The rules here don't transcend across the street over to that community, no more I than. I suppose, I mean, that's true, but what if, for example, you know, someone 
um, wanted to get rid of their competition. I mean, that happens all the time now. Yeah, I mean, the only way to do that is to continue to provide better products, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, adapt, keep showing like uh, my product is better, right? Consumer is king. The consumer preference is what rules. Like, mm -hmm. you know what, yeah, you know what, that is a, uh, PlayStation was a better version than uh, Super Nintendo or Nintendo 64 and kind of blowing them out of the water today. Like I said, I suppose that's true, but the only thing, but you know, I don't have enough information yeah, yeah, to yeah, say yeah. whether that is correct or not. That's a very interesting point. I have a lot of hippie friends too, so <laughs> yeah. we, we talk a lot about like this said, sort of you stuff. Know, yeah. Like I said, I'm totally, you know, hippie dippy. Why can't everyone just get along? Right, right, right. I right. have no conception of the real world. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you uh, studying here for? I'm, I'm actually in emergency management. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Emergency management, so like uh, first responders sort yes. of stuff? Yes. Firefighter. Yes. Right, there we go. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Well, I mean, that's. You know, society and free society, that's what will happen, right? Charity groups will come together, volunteer oh, yeah. groups, like um, firefighting. My fire department, um, and a lot of fire departments have this policy of mutual aid, where it's just like we help other fire departments out, not for anything, but just to prevent bad stuff from happening. Yeah. You know, it's just, uh, we're actually on permanent mutual aid with uh, one of the nearby towns, because it's like, screw it, they're so small, they always need us to help out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I see that, and that's voluntary, no oh, one exactly. had to force you, right? No, no one oh. had to force each other, it's like, we, yeah, we need help, we need your sump pump or something, right. and it's just like, yep, we'll help you out. Yeah. There's no reason not to, right. and it's a good thing to help other people. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, in, in return, that's like a community investment, that sort of thing. Oh, yeah. um, in the past, that's how health insurance was provided, unemployment insurance, they were called friendly societies. Yeah. Um, and a lot of waves of immigrants coming here to the United States, it was difficult to, uh, to establish these sort of things. And so they did it voluntarily, mm -hmm. community-wise. They would pitch in a cup of money into like a centralized banking organization. And if uh, someone became impoverished, you know, they were able to bounce right back up, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the last thing the government wanted, the reason why they fell apart is because government saw this competition to what they were doing. And mm -hmm. the last thing they wanted is people become independent because yeah. they didn't well, become dependent. Well, it's like, um, I think a similar thing happened with... Um the anarchist organizations in Spain, they got attacked by fascists, who, you know, or uh, the, the, it's the city of Kowloon, when they didn't have a government, um, they got usurped by a government, you know. Right, right, the government there kind of took down the yeah. entire city. Yeah, Kowloon is interesting, it's fascinating, because, like, the only reason they didn't have a government was because of, like, friggin' uh, city ordinances mm -hmm. and rules, like, nobody had control of this square mile but people still live there yeah it just kind of <laughs> happened spontaneously yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> and all these things kind of came together as a awesome little functioning city block mm -hmm. uh with what thousands of people oh, living yeah. in there right <laughs> uh and there's also christiania and uh and europe mm -hmm. you know the part of europe no i don't think so it's an established and abandoned uh military base and so just over the decades a lot of these anarchists went out there and just kind of established their own coming they still get raided by the local government uh but that's mostly because you know, when you spread anarchy, mm. uh, it doesn't stop, you know, at your front doorsteps, right? When yeah, well, that's one of the things about trying to be a nonviolent society. Other, that doesn't stop other people from being violent against you. Right, right. So that's, you know, one of the tricks is to, you know, try and convince everyone to be nonviolent. Right. Because it's really in people's best interests. It's an enlightened self-interest thing. It's better for everyone to, have, to be nonviolent. But, you know, for a lot of people either you know, don't think that way, or, you know, they want a short-term solution, it, it seems like violence may be the only way to affect that. Yeah, it, it has a lot of, uh, you know, long-term consequences from that, right? Yeah. Like, uh, social security, right? through the violence of uh, stealing people's money through taxation, they're able to tell people, hey, everyone's going to have social security, this is going to be great, and our grand folks are like, oh, this is awesome, but they didn't tell them the true cost, it's going to keep continuing getting higher and higher, but the politician's not going to be in charge anymore, right? Mm -hmm. But that amount of violence that they enforce now, that they stole from all these people, uh, seem to have worked in the immediate sense, but the long-term consequences are now, when it's time for you and I to retire, there'll be nothing left for us. Well, the only thing about long-term consequences is that um, it's very hard for people to predict long-term consequences. I mean, you can, but a lot of times you don't know, because most people don't know the future. And, you know, you have things like black swan events, which are things that are unpredictable. Mm -hmm. So I'd argue that, you know, um, I can't place the blame of, of you know, things happening uh, of, like, long-term consequences on the people who, you know, originally started those things. Because, it's like, how did they know? How would they have any idea that things would happen in the long term? Yeah, they're not business people, right? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> business people don't necessarily know about that either. Or economists. But, well, oh. that's the thing. The only way to effectively predict anything in the long term is you, need, you would need a lot of people from different fields to meet and be like, okay, what can we predict in like the next 50 years or so? And they probably would be wrong anyway. 
Well, there's some things we could predict, some kind of fundamental laws oh, yeah. in economics, like in terms of like, uh, uh, like minimum wage, for example, or any kind of service that, that you have. If I were to make it illegal for you to do trade for someone um, above an arbitrary X amount of dollars, right? And if it's too high for you, you're not going to be able to find anyone to work for you. Oh, yeah, but that's right? a short-term thing. Uh, well, that started off like in the 1939, I believe, or 29. Um, and ever since, you know, the, uh, the people who are always mostly affected are younger people, uh, minorities, for example, right? Mm. Uh, and so, yeah, it kind of has a long-term effect, I guess, in that sense. Mm. Um, but that's just not just minimum wage, that's like anything. You're not allowed to sell your sweater for um, under $10. But what if you want to get rid of it for $5, which means you can't, right? Mm. Uh, so the long-term consequences, you won't be able to sell your sweater. The person who wants the sweater won't be able to get their sweater. Or unless I right? give it to them. Uh, well, that would be for free, right? I, yeah. I think that kind of goes. Uh, well, I guess you could, right? <laughs> but you wouldn't <laughs> be able to. That. But you wouldn't be able to get the the trade that you wanted that you can therefore invest in something else that you were looking for, right? I suppose. Yeah. So there's some interesting things out there that you could kind of go, and that would be like Austrian economics is an mm. interesting field to kind of look into, uh, versus Keynesian economics, which looks like the immediate effect gain of mm. uh, what government does, but they ignore the long term stuff of, of their effects. And Austrian economics looks at that. And then shows like here's a study of where it always kind of goes wrong in the long term investment when you kind of enact these uh, institutions of violence. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of what I'm advocating for. I guess uh, in place of a government would be a free market society based on consent, mm -hmm. with rules that you give explicit consent to, with real security that does protect your your life, liberty, or property, um, with. With, with everyone over here that generally readily agrees that it's wrong and immoral to violate consent, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's hard, of, you'd be hard pressed to find someone otherwise to say, yeah, it's okay to violate consent, right? Well, sometimes it depends on how you ask the question. But uh, yeah, yeah, most yeah. people are like, most people are, honestly, I have found that most people are like, I don't really want to hurt anyone. I yeah. just kind of <laughs> want to do my own thing. I don't really want to, right. you know, like a lot of times the reason that a lot of violence happens is actually because of resources. You know, when you look at things, it's like even wars that are supposedly ideological, a lot of times they seem to actually be a cover for resource wars. The re greatest resources for governments are uh, people, mm -hmm. right? Um, tax slaves, mm -hmm. tax farms. The only reason Hitler wanted to take over France so very quickly is to take over the tax farm to continue to fund his war, uh, war machine. Without taxes, there is no standing army. There's mm -hmm. so much wealth you need to continue to rob continuously to sustain, like here in the United States, over 900 bases in the world, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so without taxes, no more long-standing armies. It's unsustainable. Mm -hmm. um, you, you can't uh, keep that up. It's like why Detroit has collapsed all over the place. Unfunded liabilities. Mm -hmm. That's why it takes over an hour for police to respond to 911 calls. Well, and there's everything. a lot of reasons for that. <laughs> well, that's, that's inevitable. Um, yeah. Here in Richmond, uh, the government here has been kind of late with their budgeting. Mm -hmm. uh, they're already closing to a billion dollars in debt. Mm -hmm. uh, just a lot of uh, financial messes. So San Francisco's next. Philadelphia's next. So Detroit is what's to come to all these cities oh, that's uh, that's just how collapse gift works yeah <laughs> <laughs> so so for us i guess the group that we're with is called liberate rba it's mm -hmm. a non-political organization which has nothing to do with politics democratic republican or even the libertarian party it's mm -hmm. mostly just uh trying to build our own community here outside of government and so we can eventually just outgrow it mm -hmm. in the long term right uh, we already share these fundamental principles these values that we find it wrong or moral to to violate someone's consent, right? Mm. To use violence, right? Mm. To murder, rape, assault, you know, theft. Uh, so let's uh, live our lives in our communities that is in accordance to our values then, aside from what government has been trying to trick us into compromising, yeah. right? Um, so this is the flyer that we have, cool. it passed out. We have a lot of monthly meetings and stuff like that. Uh, I guess, you, you like history? Is that something you're... Uh, yeah, history's cool. History's cool. So <laughs> we, we, I guess you'd call us like a little history economics club as well. Uh, very much into anarchy. Um, you, you brought up anarchy in Spain, so yeah. you have, a, I guess, a, I guess, somewhat of a background understanding a little bit of yeah. that, right? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say it's is you know in depth as I'd like it to be. Right, 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 right. Now. And that's that's what we will call ourselves: free market right. anarchists. Uh, so anarchy means without. Archy means rulers, right? Yeah, you get yeah. that. So it means without political rulers, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, politicians are strangers arbitrarily forcing their opinions onto everyone into a geographic region. Um, so yeah, that would be not just a state, but uh, political rulers and within our own community. Yeah, and whatnot, yeah, yeah, right? makes sense. Um, but yeah, that's very astute with <laughs> all this sort of stuff. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Mm. Um, and here studying management. Are you going about to graduate soon, or? Uh, I'm a junior. Junior, okay. Yeah. Two more years then. Mm. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. 
So that's uh that's what we're about. Thanks for stopping by. I'm oh, Cal. I'm Gwyneth. Gwyneth, pleasure. This is uh, my friend Phil, Aaron.